Right, so we've got a little bit left to finish in 5.4. This is on logarithms still. Um, the next section we're going to look at today, 5.5, .5, is also logarithms. So we just keep working with logarithms till, um, till we're done. And that, tomorrow we might have to finish a little bit of 5.5. .5. We'll, we'll see. So the last part in 5.4 is how you can take logarithms and either combine them together or take ones that are already combined and split them apart. Here's one of the rules that we can use with logs. It says that if you have the logarithm of a product inside the parentheses, and I'm going to show you an actual example with numbers down below, but if you have a product, you can split that apart as two logs because there were two things you were multiplying. Each log has exactly the same base as the base you started. The base never changes. The first argument is what you were multiplying first. And the second argument is what you were multiplying second. So here's an example where I'm plugging in a 4 and a 5 for the two things. Okay, let's try it. So let's do log of 4 times 5, or you could just type 20. That's the log of 4 times 5. Now let's do the log of 4 plus the log of 5. It comes out exactly the same. In fact, any two numbers that multiply to give you 20, it would come out the same. If you did 2 and 10, you'd get the same answer, because 2 times 10 is 20. So that's a rule that lets you split a product into a sum. How about if I had division? Based on this rule, does anyone guess what's going to happen on the right side if I have division instead? Just one, one thing is going to change. Yeah? You're going to subtract them. So if you have a fraction as your argument, you can write that as a difference. Two logs, because you were dividing two things. The base on the original log was A. The base on the new logs is still A. What was in the numerator has to go first. What was in the denominator goes second. And there's another example just using 4 and 5 again as my, as my two numbers. So the log of 4 fifths is the same as log 4 minus log 5. Yeah? And when we try some examples, we're going to try doing the formula both ways. I'm going to take something that's split apart into two things, we'll combine it into one, and then we'll try the other way, taking something that's already combined into one and splitting it into two. Okay, so that's our, our second rule, and the third rule. The third rule lets you take any exponents and put them in the front. If you have an equation that has the word log in it, you can take the exponent, because remember this was lined paper, something like that. The a would be below the line, the log and the m are right on it, and the r, that's above it, that's an exponent. Take the R and you can put it in front. There's an example uh, with a number. The 5 is an exponent and I can put it in front. Now, the reason why that comes in handy is if you had something like this 
Two to what power gives me now? That's not an easy question to do in your head. Two to the third power is eight. So three is too small. Two to the fourth power is 16. So that's too big. So it's somewhere between three and four. How could I get the answer? I need to solve for x. The problem is that x is in the exponent. We don't want variables in the exponent. It makes it hard. Now we've got a rule that allows us to take exponents and put them in front so they're not exponents, and then it's easier. But the rule only applies when you have the word log in your equation. So we'll talk about how to solve that uh, in the next section. All right, so let's try splitting some of these logs apart. That last sentence that it says, express powers as factors. What that means is, do not leave exponents in the final answer. If you get an exponent, move it in front. That's what that last sentence is saying. Okay. So let's see how this one would split up. Um, Ryan, what? What are we doing with the 3 and the x? They're adding them together. Um, well, just looking at the way they are right now. What do you mean? Like, how do you read that? 3x. And what does that mean? 3 times x. Right, means 3 times x. So right now, we have multiplication. 3 times x. And we just went over a rule. If you have multiplication, you split it. Then it turns into what? Oh, add, you add them to one side. Then, then it turns into addition. So this is going to turn into addition. Um, how many logs am I going to be adding together when I split it? How many? Two. So we're going to have two logs. What is going to be the base, um, Nayeja, on each log? Four. Base doesn't change. And Alex, what's going to be my first argument right there? Three. Good. And Austin, what's going to be my second argument? X. Yep, it's going to be X. And that's how you take that and do what they said. There were no exponents in that problem, so we didn't have to worry about that. Let's look at this one. Log base 2 of 5r cubed. Okay, um, so, Kiana, what are we doing inside the parentheses with the 5 and the r cubed? We're multiplying. So, uh, Tony, when I split multiplication up, does it turn into addition or subtraction? Addition. Yep, turns into addition. I'm going to be adding two logs together. Log, log. Uh, Cameron, what's going to be the base on each log? Uh, two. Two. It's the same as the base that I started with. And Grady, what's going to be my first argument that I put right here? Five. It's the first thing I'm multiplying. And Sam, what's going to be my second argument? It would be an r to the third. Now, if you look at the directions, it's said to write powers as factors. That means don't leave the power as an exponent. So where should I be moving that three? To the front, right here. If you want to do that in two separate steps, you can. But you have to put the power in front. Yes? So would it go on both sides or just one side? Uh, would what well, go on both sides? Three. The three just goes in front of this log. Yeah, these are like two separate things. If you had an exponent, I don't know, I'm just going to put that right there. Like, let's say you had a five to the eight, then you'd also be putting an eight down in front of the log with a five. What if they're in parentheses and then there's uh, an exponent on the outside? 
Um, so if you had something like, I don't know, like that. So, yeah, because when you have a when you have a product raised to a power, it means that you're supposed to apply this power to each each thing. You won't you won't have that. But if you did, that's what you do. Right, let me just put it back the way it was. I think that's how it was. What's that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's try this one. Log base nine of x divided by two. Okay, now we've got division. Fiorello, what's going to happen um, when I try to split up a problem that has division right here? We're going to subtract. We're going to be subtracting two logs. Log, log, uh, one. What's going to be the base on each log? One. 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 Yeah, these <laughs> 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 So, what's um, what was my base on the original log? No. So when I split it, it's still going to be a 9. So that, it doesn't change. And Jenna, my first, my first argument right here. X, the first one, has to be the one that was in the top. And Ryan, my second argument, it's going to go over here. 2. 2, that has to be the one that was in the bottom. And if you're wondering, well, does it have to be? Yes, because subtraction is what makes a difference. All right, let's try one more of those, and then we'll um, we'll finish this section up with the um, combine back together. Now we did log base four, we did log base two, we did log base nine. Now we're doing log base e. You don't have to write it as log base e; just write it as l n. So that's that's what we're going to be using when we split it up. Okay, so when I split this one, uh, Tyler, is it going to split into addition or subtraction? subtraction. Definitely going to be subtraction because we have division. We're going to have two natural logs. And Jackson, what's going to be my first argument? Uh, yeah, it would be y cubed, but then what do we have to do with that cube? We have to put it in front. So it would have been y cubed. We put the 3 in front. And Sky, my second argument? The natural log of 8. So that's taking one log and splitting it apart. Any questions on that? All right, now let's try combining back together. When you combine back together, think of everything you just did now in reverse. Now they're telling you to express things as powers. That means having exponents in the answer is, is okay. That's the first thing you want to do. If you have any number to put back as a power, do that first. Okay, so is there any number in this that should go back as an exponent? Four. Yeah, the four. What's that going to be an exponent on? Three. The three. So log base A of three to the fourth. Let's uh, let's simplify that. So you can just use your calculator. Three to the fourth is eighty-one. Okay, so now we have two logs that are separated with addition. 
we're going to recombine them into a single log. What's going to be the base when I recombine them? It's still going to be A. Now, I need to know what I'm supposed to do with the 7 and the 81 when they're combined together. You're supposed to multiply them. Yes. So when you put um, the exponent back, you have to like, figure out what it is? You have to do it out, yeah. Okay. And now, because this is separated with addition, inside here is multiplication. And we'll just do 7 times 81, and that's our answer. Well, um, what's 7 times 8? 56. So 7 times 80 is 560, but this is 81, so it's 7 more. So it's 567. That's how I did that in my head. 7 times 81, 567. That's it. Let's combine back together. Uh, let's try. Oh. This will be the last one. <laughs> Two thirds times the ln of eight minus the ln of three to the fourth minus seventy one. Uh, Dominic, is there any number there that should go back as an exponent? The two-thirds. The two -thirds. And when I write it as an exponent, I mean, you can write it vertical. Sometimes I write it more horizontal, like that, two-thirds. Either way. Now, here, it's like they just gave us some arithmetic to do. Why, why would they do that? I don't know. It's just what they did. What is 3 to the 4th? We, um, we just did that. Minus 71. Okay. So take care of that. All right. Uh, let's plug this in on my calculator. The ln of or 8 to the 2 thirds. Let's just see if that simplifies. 8. To the two thirds. I'll show you how I typed it in. I just did eight and then I put the fraction two thirds as the exponent. That's four. So that comes out to four. Four minus ln ten. Oops, don't forget your ln, sorry. Ln four. Minus ln 10. Now we're going to combine these back together. When I recombine them, I'm just going to have a single ln. And I've got to do something with the 4 and the 10. I'm going to divide them. What, what's going to go on top? The 4 and on the bottom, 10. And what is 4 over 10 reduced to? Two fifths. There you go. So that's how you combine logs back together. Any questions on that? Okay. Uh, so from this part, you guys already did that, did that, that, and that. Um, I want to try those four, 29 to 32. Let's just move it up here. Okay, and that's from 5.4 in your book. Okay, so last section we'll look at uh, is 5.5. We looked at how we can change between log form and exponential. Um, we looked at how we can take logs, combine them, and split them. That was 5.4.
5.5 is on uh, graph. So one thing we usually do when we graph is we look at the transformations. So we'll, I'm going to make a diagram just like I did on, I think it was Monday, where I showed you which one was the shift, stretch, what was horizontal, and what was vertical. Do the same thing again. It's going to be the same diagram. And one other thing I'm going to show you is how can you type in a log that's not one of the bases the calculator can do. The calculator can only do two bases. If I press the log button, what base is the calculator doing, even though it's not ready? Yep, that's doing a base 10. So base 10 is one that it can do. And what if I press the LN button? What base is that, even though it's, it's hidden in the abbreviation? Yep, that's E. So the calculator can do base 10, and it can do base E. Well, what if I wanted to figure out this? What's the logarithm of 5, but I want to use a base of 4? The calculator doesn't have a button for base 4, but you can still type it in. And the way you type it in is called the change of base formula. There's actually two different ways you can type it. This is the first way. That's the second way. You can either type it in using the common log button, or you can type it in using the natural log. It'll work exactly the same. But the idea in both is that you take the log of the argument and then divide by the log of the base. So let me let me show you how you do log base four of five. You would take the log of five and divide by the log of four. You do not have to write base ten when you know it's a base ten. I can leave it just like I did there. So the answer to that is log well, that? log five divided by log 4. It's 1.16. If you want to do it the second way with natural logs, you're going to get the same thing. Take the natural log of the argument, 5, then take the natural log of the base. Remember, think the base is lower. Since the base is lower, the base goes in the bottom. Base, base goes in the bottom. LN4. Doesn't matter which way you do it. That's how you take logs when it's not a base 10 or a base E. You have to do it as a fraction. Just like that. Any question on that one? How would I do, let's just try one more, log base 3 of 12. You don't have to tell me both ways. Can somebody tell me one way I can type that? Yeah. Log of 12 over log 3. Log of 12 over log of 3. Okay. 2.26. That's the answer. So now, if I go back to, oh, I closed it. I think I had, I had something like this. Two to what power gives me nine? That wasn't a very easy question to solve before. Change it to log one. Um, Alex, what's my base here? Yep, my base is two. And logarithm always equals what kind of number? Exponent. Always equals your exponent. And the thing that was all by itself? That's your argument. Before today, you didn't know how to type in log base 2. Now you do. So you could get the answer to this problem by typing this in as log 9 divided by 
log 2. Whatever that comes out to, that's the answer to this equation. So now you have to type something in that's not base 10 or base 8. And the answer should be between 3 and 4 if you type that in. Okay, be careful when you type it in. Because if you type in log, everybody see how the calculator, um, it opens a parenthesis automatically for you. You need to close that yourself. So once you type log 9, finish it. Now you're, you're, you're done with the top. Divided by log 2. It's not important that you finish that parenthesis because it's at the end. There's nothing else coming after it. But if you want to finish it, you can. And that's the answer. If you raise 2 to the 3.17 power, you will get that. So that's where you would use the change of base formula. Uh, right, let's graph a log and see if we can find the domain and the range. Okay, first thing. Is the base on that log a base that the calculator has a button for? No, it's a base 3. So if we want to type that in on the calculator, we need to rewrite it. We need to write it as a fraction. What would I put in the top so I can type this in on my calculator? It's the same thing I just did with numbers, except this time one of them is a letter. That's the only difference. Yep. Yeah. Um, log. I'm going to put log x in the top. And what are we going to put in the bottom? Log 3. Now, if we could have said ln x over ln 3, and that would have been the same thing. I usually use log. Okay, let's graph. Alright, so let's type in log of x divided by, same deal with the parentheses, close it when you're done the top. It's going to open another one for the bottom. And then I like to close it, but you don't have to at the end. Let's do zoom six. Okay. Remember, the calculator cannot draw the <coughs> logarithm very accurately. This part keeps going down. Because you have a dotted line right there. Does anybody remember what's that dotted line called? It's an asymptote. There is a vertical asymptote in log functions. That's what log functions look like. Okay, so what do they want to know? Uh, what, what is the domain? What's the farthest left that this log function goes? Zero? Right? So it goes to zero. It doesn't ever hit zero because there's a dotted line. And how far to the right does it go? Infinity. It never stops. This piece is just going to keep going. It's basically going to keep doing something like that. Okay, how about my range? How far, how far down does the graph go? Yeah? It just keeps going down. And how far up does it go? Yeah. Infinity. Infinity. It doesn't go up fast, but it does keep going up further to the right you go. All log functions have a range of negative infinity to infinity. You can never change that. It's impossible. Even if you shift it up or shift it down, it still is going to go up and down. Forever. But the domain, that can be changed. Any question on that? All right, that was something we did, and let's look at this. Okay, we've looked at something like this a lot, many, many times. On Monday, I gave you guys a diagram, and it applied to exponential functions, and it had an A, a B, a C, and a D in it. The A, the B, the C, and the D do exactly the same thing here that they did on Monday. 
let's go through them. A is adding, could also be subtracting, either one, inside the log function. Does anybody remember what adding or subtracting inside does? Yep. Horizontal shift. Which way does plus move it? Plus moves it left. So plus is left. And a minus would move it to the right. Let's look at D. So D is still adding, or it could be subtracting, but now it is outside parentheses. It's outside of the argument to the log function. So what, what's D going to do? Uh, stretching is when you multiply. So B and C are going to be my stretches. But D is a vertical shift. vertical shift. Positive is up. Negative is down. All right, let's go to B. B is inside, but it's multiplication. So I just said multiplication is going to be a stretch. Since it's inside, what kind of stretch? Horizontal. Horizontal. So that's your horizontal stretch. And C, multiplication again, but this time it's out in front. So what's, uh, what's C going to do? Ted? That's your vertical stretch. Okay. One more thing about C and B. If they are negative, what does that cause your graph to do? Flip. If B is negative, that's a horizontal flip. Remember, horizontal flip looks like that. It's a horizontal flip. If C is negative, C has to do with vertical. It's a vertical flip. Vertical flip looks like that. That's a vertical flip. All right. So let's look at a problem and see if we can identify um, the transformations. Okay, you could have up to six if you had both stretches, both shifts, and both reflections. That would be the most you could ever have. This one doesn't have nearly that many. I want to know how I could get log base 3 of negative x from log base 3 of x. Okay, what, what is that negative doing? That's the only thing in this problem. Yep. And what kind of reflection? It's a horizontal reflection. Okay, so uh, what do we want to do? Okay, so to get log base 3 of negative x, reflect the original over the y axis, or you could say reflect the original horizontally. So now you can graph this if you want to try to figure out the domain and the range, but think about what a regular log function looks like. Here's your asymptote. And a regular log function does this. It comes up and it curves like that. Well, this has been reflected horizontally. So instead of curving to the right, when you flip it, which way is it going to curve? It's 
Right? Which way? It's going to curve to the left. So when you reflect it, it's going to look like that. So let's see if we can figure out the domain, the range, and the vertical asymptote. Are there any of those that stayed the same? Even though we flipped it, is there anything that stayed the same? Yeah? The range. Uh, the range, yeah. The range did not, nothing happened. It still goes down forever, it still goes up forever. You cannot ever affect the range. It's always negative infinity to infinity. Anything else that looks like it stayed the same? Yeah? The vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote. It's still right on the y-axis. So the vertical asymptote. X equals, because it's vertical, and it's at the number zero. My domain is not the same. It's the opposite of what it was. What's the domain of the graph in blue? So start with your low value, then your high value. So negative infinity to zero. Negative infinity to zero. Yeah. Low. High. Not including zero because that's your asymptote. Any uh, questions on it? I think we're gonna we're gonna do another another transformation. All right, let's try this. One. Now, when I look at that one right away, there's something I don't like about how that's written. Look at the the way that I did. That's how the argument should look. B x plus k. That one doesn't look that way. So first, first step, can somebody tell me how I fix my argument so it looks like what I should? Yeah? You just read, uh, negative x plus three. Right, it should be negative x plus 3. Okay, so now next question. How many transformations are happening right there? Yeah. There's just two. There's two. And we have to write them in a certain order. What order do you write them in? Follow the letters A, B, C, and D. Go in that order. All right. So we're going to start with the plus three. What does the plus three inside the parentheses do? So that's going to shift us uh, left. I need to know how much. Three. Three. So shift left three. You could say horizontal shift left three. That's OK. And now the second thing is my negative. Grady, what's that negative going to do in front of the x? That's a horizontal, horizontal reflection. Exactly. That is a horizontal any questions on that? Okay, you might, uh, you might, you might get done today. So now the last thing we're going to look at is how do we graph a log function by hand? Well, the key thing about a log is where is the vertical asymptote? Once you know that, it's either going to curve to the right or it's going to curve to the left. It's going to curve in, in one of those two directions. 
So since the vertical asymptote is one of the key things you have to find, I'm going to tell you how you find it. To find the vertical asymptote, first thing is look at your argument. This is the argument right there. Take what's inside the parentheses and set that equal to zero. <clears throat> Setting that equal to zero and solving it will give you the vertical asymptote. I'm not going to worry too much about the x-intercept and the y-intercept. The vertical asymptote, that's the most important. And we can use the calculator to plot some points to get the one. Then you can take them. Okay, everybody have that? Okay. So you will need more points. Not if you need more points. You're, you're going to need more. I would say pick maybe three more points to get the shape of the curve. Remember, it only curves in one direction. So you have to pick points in the direction it's going to curve. How do you know which way it curves? It curves whichever way it would result in plugging in positive numbers for x. It's like if I wanted to graph something like that, I cannot plug in 0 for x. What's 0 minus 2? Negative 2. That's not good. You cannot take the log of a negative number. You can't even plug in 1. What's 1 minus 2? Negative 1. You can't take the log of negative 1. You can't even take the log of 0. So you can't plug in 2. But you could plug in 2 and a half. You could plug in 3, 4, 5, 6. You could plug in any number bigger than 2. You have to make sure that when you plug a number in, it results in a positive inside the parentheses. So the calculator is going to take care of this for us. All we have to make sure is that we put in numbers that work. If you put in a number that doesn't work, it's going to say error. Try and win. So they want us to sketch log base 2 of 3x plus 5. Since I'm going to use the calculator to help me get some points on here, I need to be able to type that in on the calculator. Can I type something in on the calculator directly if it has a base of 2? No. So I need to fix it so it's something I can type in, just like we did right there. How would I write that so I can type it in on the calculator and use the tool? Okay. So we're going to have a fraction. What do we call this 2? That's my what? Base. Where does the base always go? Bottom. Think when you're building something, you make the base. Where do you put the base? The base is on the bottom. So in the bottom, it's going to be log 2. What's going to go in the top? log 3x plus 5. We don't have to write it that way right away, but we're going to need the calculator eventually. So I like to get everything set up so when I need the calculator, I'm, I'm ready to go. Okay. Normally the vertical asymptote 
would have been at zero. We've shifted it. It's no longer at zero. We've shifted it, and then we've done some stretching. What am I supposed to set 3x plus 5 equal to? Set it equal to zero. And that's going to find a new vertical asymptote. So we're doing that right now. There's only one asymptote. I know it says it's plural up there, but there's only one. Okay, um, Sam, how do I solve that? So uh, subtract 5 for your son. So subtract 5. And divide by 3 on each side. And divide by 3. Negative 5 thirds. As a decimal, uh, that's negative 1.7. It's negative one and two thirds. Okay, so we've got our. This is my vertical asymptote. Okay, let's uh, let's do the range. When I ask you about the range of a logarithm, you shouldn't think about it too much. What's the range of this logarithm? Negative infinity to infinity. It goes up forever. It goes down forever. Every log does. That. Domain, well, the domain is based off your vertical asymptote. It's either everything to the left of it or everything to the right of it. Let's use the calculator and figure out which way it is. So type in log 3x plus 5 divided by log 2. So I have other numbers already typed in. I'm just getting rid of them. Let's try putting in the asymptote itself. You should get an error. It should not work. Let's put in 5 thirds. Uh, oh, no, what was it? Negative 5 thirds. Negative five thirds. Okay, that's that's what I would expect. Okay, so I get an error at negative five thirds. Let's try a number that's bigger. What's a number that's bigger than negative one point six? One. We chose what? Okay. The number the numbers you want to pick in this problem are bigger. Let's pick one that's smaller and see what happens. We know it's only going to curve one way. We already found the way that it curves. It curves to the right. What's the number that's smaller than negative 1.6? Negative 2. The graph doesn't curve the, this way. So when you try to, it gives you an error because you picked numbers on the wrong side of your domain. So the domain is everything from the vertical asymptote and bigger. So let's pick a few of them. Let's pick like two, we could pick five, eight, and ten. I stopped at ten because my graph paper I'm going to use stops at ten. And that's that's more than enough points we need to graph. Okay, so domain, it's everything from negative five thirds and up. Um, can I include negative 5 thirds? Is that a number that we can plug in and it would work? No. No, so put a parenthesis. And when I say up, what's the highest I could go? Infinity. You can pick any number from here up. It's always going to be from here up or here down. It's always one of those two. Yep. Amazing. Uh, yep, just saying. Let's uh, let's make a sketch. So get your table. Let's get a piece of graph paper. And remember, part of it should be vertical or very very close to it. So put put your vertical line in first. Negative five thirds. Again, that's about negative one point seven. So just before negative two.
I put it in the audience so that way we know it's an asymptote. Graph those points. Uh, one, three, two, about three and a half. Uh, I could probably just go right to ten. Ten, one, two, three, four, five point one. So there's your there's your curve. That's what your graph should look like. I don't know exactly where it curves. I probably should have done zero. It's probably zero. It could be one. It could be two. It's probably somewhere in there. Zero was about two. So just should probably curve a, a little bit different. Maybe more like that. That's okay. All right. Any questions on it? So find your vertical asymptote and then plug in some points on one side of it. The worst thing that happens is you pick the wrong side and you get an error, but then pick the other side. All right, so that. Is this the last one? Yep. So it's a word problem, but it's pretty straightforward because they give us a formula, and all we have to do is plug numbers into it. So this is the formula that measures how strong an earthquake is on the Richter scale. So if you you know watch news, you hear about like a magnitude six earthquake. That's the formula that calculates how powerful the earthquake was. And to calculate the magnitude of an earthquake, there's three things that they have to tell you. So first of all, R is the magnitude. That's what you're going to find. The other things, the A, the T, and the B, those are things that are pretty technical about earthquakes. So we don't really get into exactly like how you would figure out the A, the T, and the B. You'd have some kind of instrument that measures it. So A is called the amplitude of the vertical ground motion. So it's basically A is telling you how much the ground is moving up and down during the earthquake. And that's measured in a very small unit called micrometers. That's how much the ground moves up and down. That'll be given to you. When you have an earthquake, you can think of it like if you took, took a huge rock, right? You dropped it in the middle of a pond. What's going to happen? You get waves that come out from where that rock hit. Well, an earthquake is the same way. You get waves that come out, except the waves are in the ground. That's why sometimes when a wave hits a building, it collapses because it shakes it too much. So there's a wave that comes out, and we have to know what's called the period of that wave, and that's measured in seconds. It's basically how fast is the wave moving through the ground. And B is a factor that accounts for the wave weeping. Think about if you drop a big rock in a pile of sand versus when you drop it in water. If you drop it in water, the wave spreads for quite a while. But if you drop, drop a rock in sand, you might get like a crater, and then it just stops. Right. Right, so depending on the kind of ground, it controls how powerful the earthquake can be. And when you calculate how powerful an earthquake is, it's just like pH, if you remember that uh, from chemistry. If you have a magnitude 5 compared to a magnitude 6 earthquake, the magnitude 6 is 10 times more powerful than a 5. Every time you go up one number on the Richter scale, it's a factor of 10 times more power. So a magnitude 7 compared to a magnitude 5 earthquake, the 7 is 100 times more power. Okay, does everybody have the formula? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's um, try it 
So this is calculate the magnitude of the Earth. I'm just going to change that. So calculate the magnitude of the Earth. A is 250. Oops. So A is 250. T is 2. And B is 4.25. So let's use the formula and uh, let's figure it out. So first thing we need is R equals log A over T. Okay, what's um, what's A in this case? Yep, two fifty. What's the period of this wave? It's measured by the letter T. Two. And then what are we supposed to do with the B? And what, so what do we put on the end? Plus 4.25. Okay, let's see what we get. So we've got log of, what's 250 divided by 2? So we can just type it in now. Log 125 plus 4.25. So that would be a 6, a 6 6.3 magnitude earthquake. About. Okay. So let me. I gotta. I gotta adjust the homework a little bit. So the homework is. From 5.4. Was it 29 to 32? Yeah, do that. And then on page 301, let's see. Uh, Alright, so 29 to 32, that's the four problems that we, we started out with. And then on page 301, it's 1, 5, 8 through 10, 16, 23, 25, and 42.